Designers follow a process in developing their vision for their projects. Electrical engineers start the process of designing electrical systems by estimating the total building electrical power load. Then they plan the spaces required for electrical equipment, such as transformer rooms, conduit chases, and electrical closets. The amount of energy that a building is permitted to consume is governed by building codes. A building energy consumption analysis determines whether the building design will meet the target electrical energy budget. If not, the engineer must modify the electrical loads and reconsider the projected system criteria. The engineer will incorporate energy conservation devices and techniques and draw up energy use guidelines to be applied when the building is occupied. These techniques depend on the day-to-day -day voluntary actions of the building's occupants, which are hard to determine during the planning phase. Once the electrical load is estimated, the engineer and the utility determine the point at which the electrical service will enter the building and the meter location. They also will decide on the type of service run, service voltage, and the building utility voltage. With the client, the engineer looks at how all areas of the building will be used and the type and rating of the client's equipment, including specific electrical ratings and service connection requirements. The electrical engineer gets the electrical rating of all of the equipment from the HVAC, plumbing, elevator, interior design, and kitchen consultants. This communication often takes place at conferences during which the electrical consultant makes recommendations to the other specialists regarding the comparative costs and characteristics of equipment options. The electrical engineer is responsible for determining the location and estimated size of all required electrical equipment spaces, including switchboard rooms, emergency equipment spaces, and electrical closets. Panel boards are usually located in closets but may be in corridor walls or other locations. The architect must reserve spaces for electrical equipment. Next, all lighting, electrical devices, and power equipment is circuited to appropriate panels. The engineer will detail the number of circuits needed to carry the electrical load, the types and sizes of electrical cables and materials, and electrical equipment, and their placement throughout the building. Panel schedules are prepared that list all of the circuits for each panel, including those for emergency equipment. Panel loads are computed that show how much power is circuited through that panel. The engineer prepares riser diagrams that show how wiring is run vertically and designs the panels, switchboards, and service equipment. After computing the wiring sizes and protective equipment ratings, the engineer checks the work. Then the engineer coordinates the electrical design with the other consultants and the architectural plans and continues to make changes as needed. Interior designers are also responsible for showing electrical system information on their drawings. The electrical engineer uses the interior design drawings to help design the electrical system. In new buildings, the location and size of equipment rooms, including switching rooms and electrical closets, should be coordinated with the electrical engineer. The interior designer should be familiar with the location and size of the electrical panels and with building systems that affect the type of wiring used, such as plenum mechanical systems, must know the locations of existing or planned outlets, switches, dedicated outlets, and ground fault circuit interrupters, must coordinate lighting fixtures, appliances, equipment, and emergency electrical systems with the interior design, may need to coordinate the location of equipment rooms, should be aware of the presence of an uninterrupted power supply or standby power supply. The interior designer does not usually need to be completely familiar with electrical code requirements, but there are several areas that may affect interior design work. Building codes set limits on the total amount of energy used by the building, including equipment and lighting. The NEC is also known as NFPA 70. It is revised every three years. The NEC sets the minimum standards for all electrical design for construction. Interior designers rarely use the NEC because it is the responsibility of the electrical engineer to design the electrical system. 
On smaller projects, a licensed electrical contractor will know the codes. However, since interior designers typically will specify the location of electrical outlets and fixtures, they need to know basic code requirements. For example, the NEC includes restrictions on the proximity of electrical components and plumbing. Standards for electrical and communications systems are set by the following. American National Standards Institute, National Electrical Manufacturers Association, Underwriters Laboratories. The Americans with Disabilities Act specifies mounting heights for outlets and fixtures in handicapped accessible spaces.